God is a good God. You know, I just want to share this morning the need really to know the Word of God. To really understand God. To be able to, uh, let me just say it this way, to, to know that who God really is, that He's not a jester, that He's not one that wants to take you up a tree and chop it down. He's not one to try to make a fool out of you but he's one that wants you to know the truth so the truth can make you free. And, and that's a real thing there. You see, to know God, to know the Word of God, to know what God says about circumstances and situations is very, very important. God says what he means and he means what he says. God doesn't mess around with words. Last week, um, Jordan spoke at communion and she's talked about the why generation. She said she's part of a why generation. They want to know everything. They want to know the question. But I think that there's a lot of why in all of us. People come to me and they say, why? Why is this? Why is, why is that? And uh, as a child, when uh, I was asked, when I asked people why, I was told that why was a crooked letter and it couldn't be straightened, and that was that. I find that many times when you ask why, you don't really get any answers. Or you don't get the right answer. The answers came back wrong to me. Friends, can I say this? Jesus Christ is the answer to all of our whys. He is the only answer. And in his word, and whatever else it is there, he will reveal his truth to us. So today, Father, I just ask you by your spirit, that you'll help us as we just go through this study, as we go through this time. Father, that you'd open us up to be able to be like ground, to be able to receive the seed, the Word of God, that that seed would be able to germinate on the inside of us, and, and Lord, it would grow and develop and bring forth fruit in our lives. Fruits of freedom and liberty, fruits of righteousness, my God, fruits, uh, Lord, that we would just know you and and for that we'll give you all the praise and all the glory. And everybody said, Amen. It says in Acts chapter 17, 27 and 28, really, if we really, really want to be free, I believe that these are some of the keys. So that they should seek the Lord in the hope that they might grope for Him and find Him, though He is not far from each one of us. You know, a lot of times there we think that God is so far away, but He's not far at all. He's closer than you think. But I believe the real key is that as a bunch of people, as an individual, we've got to come to a place where we seek God. Where we, even in doubts and fears and different things, and I've heard many, many people that are on their quest in life and just going through life and they might go through a trial, they might go through a tribulation. And something on the inside of them there that somebody might have spoken to them about a Christ or a Savior or somebody that can help them. And sometimes that seems so foreign because we are such individuals and, and we sometimes carry our own concerns and our own problems. And David was talking about his dad that, that had done something so heroic, but he never spoke about it. Because that's, that's, many times that's the nature of man. We just hold things in and we don't understand that even somebody else might be interested. And I've heard many people there that have got to a point in their life where they, where they just reach out, sometimes out of total desperation, and they say, God, if you're really real, will you re reveal yourself to me? And you know, though that seems so strange and so perhaps weak even, it's, it's the beginning. And we've got a God who is not far from us that is waiting to hear from you. He's waiting to hear from us. He's wanting us to, even in that way, God, if you're really real, would you please help me? I've heard people there that have been on a horse or on a, something there that's happening in an accident and, and they know that, that there's trouble coming ahead and that it, that it could be fatal and they, they yell out, Jesus, help me! They might never have ever 
uttered those words before in their life. But they cry out and somehow or other God miraculously helps them. Sometimes we forget. I would imagine that there's not too many people here that haven't had some um, uh, an amazing encounter with God. But sometimes we forget. When we go to the next problem, we forget. I believe that God wants to help us to remember those things. And he says here, he says, so that they might that they would seek the Lord in the hope that they might grope for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. In reality, the stories that I've been talking about are really somebody that's groping for something that they don't really even know if it really exists, but if it does exist, help me, touch me. It says, goes on and says, For in him we live and move and have our being. In him we live and move and have our being. You know, there's a lot of things as, as God speaks to us in the Word that are contrary to our natural thinking. Because we want to be able to be self-sufficient. We want to be able to do it ourselves. But, but friends, there's somehow or other in our lives where we've got to say, Jesus, you are my hope. You, you are my future. You are, you are everything to me. And, and God, I, I, I grope for you. I, I want you. I, I seek you, Lord. I, I want to know you more. I want somehow or other for you to be able to be fully involved in my life. That, that I'm not just a mere man, but I'm a, I'm a child of God. And, and you want to direct me and you want to take me somewhere and you want to do some amazing things in my life. But many times I, I pull myself away. But Lord, this morning I'm reminded that you're not far from me. He's not far from you, friends. He wants to touch you. He wants to be with you. In Galatians 2.20 it says, I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And I, I, I've got, as I was reading this and as I was preparing, I, I just underlined for me, for me. You did it for me. You came for me. And I'm not, you're not far from me. You want to touch me today. And, and Lord, I, I don't, just don't want to be somebody there that thinks that, Lord, you, you, you've, you've said so many things in your word. You, you said that you love me so much that you gave your only begotten son for me. But Lord, you, the word says that you love the world and, and that's a big thing and I'm, and I'm one of these people that I'm so insignificant and I'm a nobody and I'm a nothing and I've made a mess of my life and I've done this and I've done that and, and you talk to yourself like that and you just take yourself out of the equation. We've got to bring ourselves into the equation and we've got to say, Jesus, you died for me. You're not far from me, hallelujah. No matter how bad I've been and no matter what I've done, you are not far from me. And your heart and your desire is that I would come into that embrace, that I would come under the throne, my God, and, and lift up my hands and, and allow you to come in and, and saturate my life. It's no longer I that lives. You see, the words of the Bible are not natural words. To the natural mind, it, it, is, it is confusing. Because you see, I live. But I say, it's no longer I that live, but I live. But it's no longer I that live, because I've been bought with a price. The price has been paid, amen. I'm a child of God. I'm a part of this great end time move of God that God wants to do. If God can get it to me, He will get it through me. If He can just break through into my thinking that I am a child of God, that God loves me so much, and it's no longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me. And the life that I now live, hallelujah, I live by faith in the Son of God who died and rose again and filled me with His power and anointed me and called me out of the miry clay and put my feet upon a rock to stay, hallelujah. He saved me, He delivered me, He set me free. Not to, that I go around defeated, but that I might be a champion with Him that I might rule and reign in this planet over principalities and powers and dominion and anything else that would try to come and hurt me. If we could grasp the truth in all these verses, most of all of our whys would be answered, if not all. In 2 Corinthians 10 verse 3, 
It says, for though we walk in the flesh. What I'm trying to establish here this morning is that we've got to understand that we are flesh beings, but there's a, there's a greater power, there's something more dynamic that God wants you and I to have a revelation of. That we're not just mere men or mere women on this planet, but we are children of God. Amen. And that God wants to be our God. And He wants to be our provider. And He wants to be our protector. And He wants to come and touch us. And He wants to move mightily in our midst. And we've got to break the thinking. We've got to break wrong thinking. Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. The Bible says, though the outward man is perishing, there's an inward man. Is anybody catching my drift here this morning? There's an outward man, there's a natural man, but there's an inward man. There's a Holy Ghost man, amen. There's a born again man. This man, this outward man is going to perish. He's going to go back to dust. But the Holy Ghost man on the inside of me, the real Neil, is going to live forever and ever and ever. Don't just wait to live in victory when you go to die when you die and go to heaven live in victory now though the outward man is perishing there's an inward man that is being renewed day by day hallelujah we're going up there to pray and uh, of, of a night and oh friend I tell you what I don't know how but I just long I just want to just lay flat on my face and just before God, but unfortunately, over Christmas and a few other Christmases, my shape has changed. And I'm like one of those old-fashioned blotters. You remember those old blotters, in blotters? And I, um, I, I lay there, but oh man, it just hurts so much. I'm, I'm thinking, I'm, you know, here I am. <laughs> yeah, please, I'm trying to say that here I am wanting to be so spiritual, but I'm so fleshly. Because my flesh won't let me do what I want to do. I've got to work out a way. I will work out a way. Somebody says, well, just stop eating. <laughs> but there's a part of me, and, and while here I am, there's, the spirit part of me wants to just lay before, prostrate myself before God, but the, the flesh man saying, you idiot. <laughs> because there's an outward man and there's an inward man. There's a real you that's on the inside of you that wants to control the outward man. Unfortunately, a lot of us, most of us, me included, allows the outward man to control the inward man. But when we get to a place where God, God somehow or other can, can talk to us in an amazing way and we know that though we walk in the flesh, we don't war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do it. Hallelujah. I'm going to lay prostrate before God somehow or other. Weapons that God has given to us are amazing. Praise is an amazing weapon. Amazing, amazing weapon. Worship. To be able to just worship Him. Music. It's such an awesome thing to, that music, we just play soft music as we lay under the, in the presence of God and that music just sort of washes over us and, and helps us. Some, some of the music has no words, just music. We've got a name which is above every name. We've got the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son. We've got His Word. We've got your testimony. My testimony is so powerful. They overcame Satan by the blood of the Lamb and the Word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives under death. They, who are they? You see, when the Word says they, that's not some elite group. That's not some bunch of people over there. That's 
the days are you and me. It is me and Neil overcome Satan. How many people want to overcome Satan? You overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb. Thank Jesus. Why don't you lift up your hands this morning and thank Jesus for His blood. Thank Jesus for His obedience to go to the cross of Calvary. Thank Jesus that He died and rose again. Amen. Thank Jesus that, he, that he, His blood was spilt for me. Kneel, overcome Satan. Put your name in there. By the blood of Jesus Christ, not by works, not by me, not by what I did, but by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. The word of my testimony. The word of my testimony is, this is my story, this is my song. Praising my Jesus all the day long. Hallelujah. This is my story, that a Christ would come and die for me. That a Savior would pick me up. And I said it before, but take me out of the miry clay and the mess that I was in. I don't know about you, but I needed to be saved. He just didn't throw me a, a rubber ducky and say, swim boy if you can. No, he took me out, hallelujah. He took me out of the kingdom of darkness and he translated me. He took me into a brand new kingdom. I don't want to play, play around in that old kingdom anymore. I want to be translated. I want to go into this new kingdom, amen. They overcame, Neil overcame, you overcame, Satan. I tell you what, friends, you've got more power than you realize and I realize. But I pray God would open our understanding that we would know what God is, what God is do doing in our hearts. The Word of God Weapons are not carnal, but they are mighty. Everybody say mighty. See, they're mighty. They're not some insignificant thing. They're mighty in God. Philippians 1.6 says this. It says, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Friend, be confident today that God who touched your life and has called you, and if you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, I ought to tell you, friend, the greatest thing you can ever do is surrender to Him and give your life to Jesus Christ. Being confident of this very thing, that He who has begun, He has begun a good work in us. He came and He touched us, and now He wants to take us to a place. He wants to take us under the Shekinah glory, Friend, I want to tell you that what God has wants you and I to have is so enormous, I ginormous, that we might be just having a little lick, but I want to tell you God wants us to dive in. He wants to swim in it. He wants us to live in it. He wants to, us to experience it. Not somebody else's story, but your story. This is my story. Being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete until the day of Jesus Christ. Most of us know these scriptures, but do we know them? That's the question, isn't it? Do we really know them? Do we know that they apply to us? That they apply to me? The Bible says, For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Proverbs uh, 23, 7. If the devil can get you thinking wrong, he, the devil, will gain the upper hand. If you think you're finished, if you think it's over, if, you, if you've surrendered, if you said, well, that's it, this is a lot, this is it, this is what's going to happen, well, friend, you've surrendered. And the enemy gets the upper hand. You've got to remember in Genesis, when God created humanity, he created a garden. He created everything beautiful. I can, even in my natural eye, if I can just think for a moment and, and see the, the, the trees fruiting and, and the beautiful fruit on the trees, abundance of fruit. No fruit fly in the Garden of Eden. No disease in the Garden of Eden. 
just a hairy-legged devil creeping around. But can you imagine it? I, I, I try to imagine the, 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 the cool of the evening as God would come down with Adam and Eve. As God would, would want to just minister to them and, and love on them. And I'm, I'm thinking, you know, can I, can I have preacher's license? <laughs> I, I honestly believe, and, and my, what I think would be such, so insignificant to what it was really like. But I, 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 I sense like music just I can't even say words because I my natural mind, mouth cannot express what it must have been like. But not only would there have been music, but the aroma. The very presence of God. Church, we, we here on this planet, we, we, we say, oh, the presence of God was here. But friend, the presence of God that we would experience here would be but a smidgen to, to what it would have been like in the garden. Amen. And what God has got in store for us and, and, and how much more God wants to open up to us and how much more He wants to pour out upon us. And, and all we've got to do is get under the spout where the glory comes out. The Bible speaks about the glory of the Lord. Friend, I want to tell you, I long, I long, I long, I long for when God can come in like a vapor, when He can come in like a mist, when He can come in like a rushing wind, however He wants to come in, that when He comes in, at the power of God and the presence of God, that we could touch humanity in such a way that we'd be all slain in the Spirit and lost in His presence, hallelujah, and we wouldn't be worrying about what we're going to have for lunch. It's funny, because as you know, there's another church group that are in here before us in the morning, and we're always here as they're leaving. We're all good friends now. We've known them for a long time, and we, we talk to each other, and, and I, I don't know how many of them said to me one time, we went five minutes over. This morning, one came up to me and said, I said, you have a good day this morning? I said, oh, yeah, it was wonderful. They said, we finally got one that can speak English. <laughs> you see, you see, the secret, I believe, is in seeking God, groping for Him, longing for Him, as the deer panteth for the water brook, so my soul longs for you. You see, that's a shift in, the, in natural thinking. Because, see, natural thinking doesn't think like that. We're so busy and we're so, so full of... Because that's life. But this is what I'm trying to get prepared for and everything like that is perishing. And there's an inward man inside me that wants to grow and develop and, uh, and, and possess all the possessions and all the, all the truth and everything that God has for us. Hmm. Amazing, amazing, amazing grace. The devil can get us thinking wrong, he gets the upper hand. The presence of God in the garden must have been so amazing. But the devil messed with their minds. That's not what God meant. I want to tell you, friends, when God said, by my stripes, by the stripes of my son Jesus, you are healed, he meant every very word of it. He meant it. By, he meant it, he meant it, he meant it. 
We have to have our minds renewed from wrong thinking and even wrong teaching. Just have a quick look with me in the book of Romans. Romans chapter 12, verse 1, we know these verses by heart. I beseech you. This is Paul. This is Paul that, that, that's, that's had an encounter with God, that, that's found a way through the maze, that's found a, a way into the very presence of God. That's found a great secret. And he's not just coming and saying, listen, I've got a good idea. He says, I beseech you. I beg you. I, I. There's, a, there's a something on the inside of him that, that is more than just a natural, hey, come on, fellas, come on, girls. Let's, let's sing this same song. No, he says, I beseech you. I beg you. I cry out to you. Oh, man, I, I wish I could have words. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may able to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Friend, if you want to know the perfect will of God for your life, have your mind renewed. Go after God. Seek God while He may be found. Oh, grope for Him. Do whatever you can. Lay on the floor, flat on your face. Put some music on in your lounge room. I don't know, but give time to God. Go after God. Beseech Him. Go for Him. Go after God. Go after God. And let God be God in your life. He is not far from you. Philippians 2.5 says, Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. When the devil came to Jesus, Jesus knew God's word would not fail him. This is a confidence that we have to have in him. A confidence in him that whatever he says, he's able to do. In Luke 4.1, we find there that Jesus had been, been uh, just been baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit. He was led into the wilderness to be tempted 40 days and 40 nights he fasted. And the enemy came and tempted him and came at him, at him, at him, at him. He was hungry. And the devil says, hey, cause these stones to become bread if you're hungry. And Jesus immediately turned to him and said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Friend, we, you've got to know the Word of God. If you don't know the Word of God when the enemy comes around, you will get trapped. It's time to know the Word of God, know what God says about you, what God wants for your life. Because it's very, very important. Amen. The devil's greatest weapon is to get you thinking wrong. Unbelief is wrong thinking. Faith is thinking right. Romans chapter 4. What an amazing few verses of Scripture here. Romans chapter 4. Verse 17. We know there that Abraham, that Abraham had, and, and Sarah had great difficulty trying to fathom out what God was really saying. I have made you the father of many nations. He says, as the sun, as the stars of the sky, the sand on the seashore, that will be your generation. He could not work it out. He could not understand it. He tried in the natural and got an Ishmael. And now here he is because his wife was barren. And I want to tell you, the church may be barren, but I want to tell you, there's something that's coming to happen. There's something there that's starting to happen. People are going to start to catch the confidence. And this is what I want you to hear. 
It says, as it is written. I ought to tell you, God says that He will build His church and that the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. He tells me that we will be the head and not the tail. He tells me that thanks be unto God who always causes me to triumph. He tells me that I am more than a conqueror. He tells me that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I want to tell you, as it is written, as it is written, not as some doctrine or philosophy or some church thinking or some false prophet or something that, that, that churches are somehow following today and building their whole life upon. It's no Buddha, it's no this or it's no that. It's as it is written in the Word of God. Let every devil be a liar and God's Word be true. As it is written. As it is written. Everybody say, as, as it is written. I want to say this to you, as it is written, you are more than a conqueror. As it is written, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. As it is written, you can bring down the glory of God. Hallelujah. Because that's what God wants for us. He does, doesn't want us to play tiddlywinks and flip-flopping around. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of Him who He believed, God, who gives life to the dead and calls things that be not as though they exist. He wants to give life to the dead. Amen. <laughs> Let me read it again. Who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did, who contrary to hope, in hope believed, so that he became the father of many nations, according to what was, what, what was spoken. According to what was spoken, be it unto me, so shall your descendants be. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about a hundred years old and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God and being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. Hallelujah. Can I hear a shout? Can I hear a thank you, Lord? And being fully convinced Fully persuaded. That's what we have to be. Fully persuaded. Fully convinced that what God said He will do, He will do. God calls those things to be not as though they were. Only believe all things are possible. Walls come down with a shout of praise. We've spoken about Joshua a couple of weeks ago. He said to Joshua, I've given you the city. It's yours for the taking. I pray that we can hear what God says to us today. It says healing is yours. It's yours for the taking. It's there. It's there. It's there. Prosperity is yours. It's there for the taking. It's there. It's there. It's there. But you've got to push through. God's Word is impregnated with power. The same power that was in those words that He spoke. The same words. The same power. When God said, Joshua, I've given you the city. It's yours. But it was a walled city. It was a wall that had mighty warriors, men of valor. It was a walled city that, that was shut up securely. But God said, it's yours. It is yours. And that word, that as he spoke it, something it was, must have permeated into, into Joshua's being because somehow or other he believed what God said. See, that's the, that's the, that's the thing. You've got to believe what God says, not what your circumstances, not what your situation not what your feelings are saying to you. You've got to believe what God says. He says, the city is yours. And that word was so impregnated with power, there was no devil, there was no force on earth that could stop those walls from coming down. Amen. And you've got to understand that. But also in every promise that God has ever promised you and me, that same power, that same anointing is impregnated every word. By my stripes you are healed. It is impregnated with the Word of God, with the power of God. It is a promise. And God is not a man that He should lie, neither the Son of Man that He should repent. Has He not spoken it? Will He not bring it to pass? Yes, yes, yes. Jesus knew that the Word of God could not fail. You must know the Word of God. By my stripes you are healed. 
No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Don't base yourself in self-pity and make the wall that you face into a wailing wall. Rise up. Shout the wall down. Speak to the mountain. When the devil came to tempt Jesus, he knew the word of God. He knew what God, that God's word would not fail. You must know the word of God too. By my stripes you are healed. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against you in judgment you are to condemn. The word of God will not return to him void. God himself watches over his word to perform it. God is watching over you. Friend, there's got to come a shift. There's got to come a shift. And it's coming with an attitude. See, there are many, even in the presence of God, in the presence of Jesus, that they didn't see the Jesus. They saw something totally different. And as a result, they didn't get or receive what Jesus wanted to give them. And they walked away dry. And this church of ours, we're just a small church. And but if we, if we can come with an attitude. I've come to worship you. I've come to seek your face. I've come as a little child. And allow his presence to come. Just allow his presence. Go after God. Go after God. Church is not something we do for an hour or two hours, hour and a half on Sunday morning. Church has to be a lifestyle. Christianity is a lifestyle. It's no longer I that lives, but Christ who lives in me. There's an outward man who's perishing. It's served me well, but it's perishing. But there's an inward man, and that inward man is not perishing anymore. Being renewed. We just come into his house. We get the musicians to worship him, to call upon his name, to grope after him, to push through us. Get out of God. On Thursday night, Wednesday night, the, the musicians were, were doing their practice. And so the group of us that were praying that night, we just went out in the, out in the car park. And we just sat out there. And the anointing, as they were practicing the anointing, the anointing was just coming out of that place. And we were just there, caught up in the presence of God. Out in an old industrial area. Industrial bin. Petrol station on the other side. Cars coming in, filling up with petrol. Motorbikes roaring past with their Exhaust pipe. But there we were, just in that little car park, in the presence of God. You see, friends, it's all about the presence of God. It's all about God. It's all about your relationship with Him.
presence of God on you. Let's just bow our heads for a moment. If you're in this house today and you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord of your life, you've never really seen Jesus perhaps as who he really is. He's just been a, some religious figure that you've seen hanging on a cross. Never really understood that he's not far from you and that he wants you and that he loves you. You might be in this place today and because of circumstance, situations, you don't feel close. It's like you've drifted away a bit. But there's something stirring inside you this today and you say, I, I, I long. I want to seek him afresh today. I want to allow him to touch my life. You may be here today and you're not real sure where you stand with God. You might think it all's well, but you know it's not. But today you want to make sure. Just while the musicians are just playing gentle. If you're like that this morning, you want to come to the Christ who loves you so much that he gave his life for you. That he died for you. That he might live in you. And he wants to be your friend. He wants to help you. So today, one of those areas that I spoke about today, that's you. Would you just quickly slip up your hand? Said, Neil, that's me today. 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 Let's just stand at our feet. People just thinking. Holy Ghost. That they should seek the Lord in the hope that they might grope for Him and find Him. Friend, make sure you find the answer who is Jesus Christ today. Find it today.